What's up guys, I'm Holly, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I'm glad you found this video in particular because we are bringing out all my run gear in this video so that I can show you guys how I prep my feet for an ultra marathon to ensure I never get a blister, never have any issues, no matter the distance. I'm gonna give you guys my whole routine. I've done a lot of trial and error, show you what I use, and I'm also gonna share things with you that haven't worked. I'm gonna give you guys my whole routine. I've done a lot of trial and error, show you what I use, and I'm also gonna share things with you that haven't worked for, for me, but have worked for people I know. So we'll cover everything today. I will link all the products below so that you have them. Let's jump in. If you have experienced blisters before or any sort of rubbing irritation, you know that coming back from it, having already happened, is a lot more difficult than if you had just prevented everything in the first place. So we really don't want to get to a point where you're already having problems and then have to remedy that. You'll see in my system that I use, I pretty much give no opportunity for my feet to rub anywhere. Make the best system from the beginning because going backwards is basically impossible. If you guys have not run an ultra before or haven't been through any sort of different terrain that challenges the feet. Slick rock, loose sand, water crossing so your feet get wet, all that stuff. You might not know where your feet will rub, so I recommend using my system to start just to make sure you really have all the bases covered. And then as you start to learn your feet better, you can adjust that. First step in the routine, make sure your feet are completely clean and dry. No lotions, creams, barriers of any kind. It's gonna make it really hard for the tape or any adhesive to stick to our feet, let alone stay that way. I have played with so many things, so trust me on this. You want a completely clean slate here to start your routine. All right guys, next step in the routine, we get out the big band-aids. These I put right on my arches. Some of the worst blisters I've ever had during a run happen right here on the arch. I was a ballet dancer most of my life. I don't have the highest arches, but they certainly have created problems for me in my running. I love a wide running shoe to give my foot lots of space, but until my feet have kind of swollen up to fit the shoe perfectly, I do get a little sliding sometimes, forward and back and side to side. I would rather have the space in the shoe, but you do find that earlier in the race or in the run, you might have a little bit of rubbing. So I have learned my lesson. I use these big band-aids, I get, either the fabric version of these or this plastic on the side. They cover basically the whole arch with one. So I put one on each foot and I like to do this right down the middle. I will actually go across. Sometimes they get a little folded. These are great actually. I, when I link these for you guys, I'll show you. They're thin, so they really stay stuck. Hey guys, was just editing this video and forgot to mention one quick thing about the band-aids that I also love about this specific style. They have this, they call it like a skin flex technology, but see the little ridges in the padding part of the band-aid? So with these, when you move and bend your foot, the sticky part stays exactly where it is, but there is give in the middle, that's that white part. So it'll move with the foot, give you the space and flexibility and stretch without pulling the whole thing off like a typical band-aid when you move. I will go right across the arch like this, so I get a lot of the underside as well, and then it will come up to the top just a little bit. From here, I use my black Hampton Premium Tape. This is kinesiology tape. I found this in an article, a uh, hiker who was doing, I think the PCT, swore by this tape, so I bought it. It's awesome, it comes in a pack of two looks like this, and then we will cover where the bandage is around my arch. All right, you guys will lose my head in this part, but I'm gonna explain the tape situation. So what I wanna do is find about what would be two and a half times around the arch. This is stretchy kinesiology tape, so it's going to stay where I put it, but if you have tape that's not stretchy, what I've found is if you continue to go around on itself, it will pull on itself and come off the area. So that's why I really like that kinesiology tape and having the Band-Aid underneath for that extra protection on the arch itself. So I keep a little piece of tape here on the roll just to keep everything in place so this doesn't get loose. This is kind of expensive. I mean, it's worth it, but it is expensive, so you don't wanna waste any. And I'll measure around here. So go around two and a half-ish times. And I like to finish the roll all the, the piece all the way up on top of the arch. I found that that stays best for me versus on the bottom because you get the rolling around and you don't want the sock to pull on it. So I'll cut this about there, peel it off, save this piece for 
keeping the roll together. And then you just wanna take a little bit at a time so that it doesn't get all bunched up. And we start on the bottom here. So I'll take it, put it right on the bottom of the Band-Aid. See here, I'm flexing my foot. You can see like this as I do the tape job. This gives me the most stretched version on the bottom here of the foot. And I like setting it that way. And then when I relax my foot, this, the tape stays stuck. If I start this way and then move my foot, I find the tape moves around a bit. So taking this around, I go like this. As much as you guys can, try not to create any sort of bubbles. You do not need to pull super hard. This does need to be really, really tight. Obviously the feet again are gonna swell. We love the fact that it's stretchy because it will give that space without restricting your foot and creating numbness or anything like that. You'll see I've measured it perfectly. It comes up over here, finishing on the top of the foot. Now, I went a little bit above the, the Band-Aid as well. Here, you can take it all the way down. Depending on where you rub, I know that I've had issues right around here. So that's what I try to do. This is laying nice and flat on top of my foot. And now we're ready for the next step. So like I said, I've gotten to play with things a lot. I have also gotten pretty bad blisters on the baby toes and sometimes under the middle toe as well. I have done a version of this where I put little Band-Aids on every single toe. I've used my fabric Band-Aids, whoops, the little ones, and I've literally done each individual toe and then put my socks over that. I have found for the most part, this is kind of an unnecessary step for all of the toes, but I will do it for the baby toes. I have kind of, we all have kind of a fold right here, and when this tends to rub, it builds up this extra skin and callus, and when that tears, especially if you're going through wet and then dry, or like I said, that slick rock, the outside of the baby toe can really start to rub, even through your sock. So I like to have that extra layer of protection here. Sometimes I will use a little piece of this tape. It really just depends what you find works best for your foot. Some people have sweatier feet than others. I don't really, so that's nice. And I'll use this little Band-Aid here. I'll put it pretty much just right on. The, the padded part will be right on the back of this toe here. Tilt this down so you guys can see. And because it's so small, cutting that little piece of tape is kind of annoying, so this is easier. So I'll put this in here, hopefully you can see it. Padding goes right there, and just like that. The other annoying thing about the tape um, on your nail, if you actually put tape on your nail, the sticky part kind of takes a while to get off after the fact, which isn't a huge deal, but it's just a little bit easier with the Band-Aid. So that's ready to go. If you do find you get any rubbing in here, add that extra layer. But next step from here is we're gonna use runner's lube. This chamois butter, I swear by, it's great for everywhere. Right under the armpits, you can use it inner thighs, hips, everywhere, anywhere you get rubbing under the glutes. And I'm gonna do a little bit of this now on all the rest of the toes underneath in between them and I'm also gonna get the heel. I'm gonna be very careful to not get this stuff on the Band-Aid or on the tape because that kind of defeats the entire purpose. So we'll use a little bit of this and then I'll move a thin layer. I'll just kind of rub it between my fingers. I will get all under these other four toes and then I will do the back of the heel. I don't luckily get a really big problem with the heel um, in terms of rubbing, and I'm gonna show you guys how I tie my shoes to avoid slippage there. I'll put this here. Again, if you find that you get extra rubbing on the heel, really lather up there. The more of that stuff you use, the bigger barrier, barrier you will have. You can apply more mid-race. I always have this in my crew bags and that kind of thing to add to it. Put that everywhere. Next step. This is essential. You grab your toe socks. I swear by Njinji, I think they're the best brand, at least that I've found. The toe socks obviously keep the toes separated, which prevents that rubbing, adds extra layer of dryness to your foot, which really helps absorb. These have merino wool in them. Most of the version, make sure that you get the merino wool version, wicks away that water or sweat or anything, and it really prevents the blisters and rubbing. So I'll put these on. If you have a higher version like I do, I have a mix of these. Actually, I brought my other ones as well, more of a crew version. That's not as complicated, but this, you're gonna wanna ball up to keep it really close to the foot, and then you're gonna try, as best you can, 
to pull this over. I'm gonna tilt this down. Oops. As you guys can see, I'll pull this over and start with the outside. So I pull on the outside here. Again, I'm barely touching the tape at the moment. And then I'm gonna pull just the toe parts down and get those situated. I just had one of you guys write to me and say you're having trouble getting used to the toe socks, which I understand. They're very weird feeling at first. Um, and you have to just get a little bit of practice in them. So I would just take them on a three, five miler in the beginning, once or twice a week, just so you can get used to them. And you wanna pull all the toes down. From here, I pull this out away from the tape, really creating that space, and then loosely have it here. We'll adjust that later. We'll pull this up, and then we can kind of get those wrinkles out without pulling on our tape. And that'll be like that. All right, and then we are set with the foot. All right guys, so our foot's ready to go. Now we're gonna put the shoe on, and I wanted to show you guys what you can do to avoid some heel slipping. And if you haven't learned this technique before, I find that it really just holds everything in place. What you're gonna do is take one side and you're gonna create a little extra loop. So there's always those two holes on the side here, of pretty much any running shoe. You're gonna come out this normal hole, the first hole closest to the other laces. You're gonna come into the second one and push that through and pull. So you've got a little hole now, an additional loop. So I think you guys can see that. Perfect, you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I take this out, coming through the hole closest to the laces, I come through this one, I pull that, and now I have two little extra loops on the side. Now I will cross the same way you would finish up lacing the shoe, and you come through the outside, pull this in. This is what I do. Other people do it different. You pull this through, this comes on the other side, around, so if the toes here, comes around back towards the ankle and pull. And then you create a system where it kind of locks you in. They call it like a heel lock, I think. And then you tie your shoes normally from here. You wanna make sure obviously the laces are long enough for you to do this. I've sometimes run into issues with hokas of short laces. I think they're getting better <laughs> um, at making sure they're the right length, but just make sure you have the space. Also really, really important. Give yourself the space to spread and really, really swell. You want room for your foot to swell. You don't wanna to have to be making these adjustments once your foot's already numb, et cetera. So I make sure everything is super loose here. These are a little bit tighter because I only did you know five miles in these last, but when I'm going into an ultra, I wanna make sure these are nice and loose. Again, you're prepared to have any slipping around taken care of. Really make sure your foot can lay super flat in this shoe. So we put this on. You guys all know the drill. I tie my shoes normal, I just double knot those. I also do wanna mention to you guys, a lot of people like to tape their feet the night before and sleep in the socks already on there. I personally find that adds extra moisture to the situation in there. Sometimes people get overheated when they sleep. You're not really sure how the room temperature will be, especially if you're in a hotel the night before or something. I like doing it the morning of, giving yourself plenty of time to move around in that. It's one of the first things I actually do when I'm getting ready the morning of a race. But my personal opinion is don't give yourself time for the tape and all that to get kind of screwed up at night. I really like a fresh, start to that day, making sure you're getting in there, you know, a couple hours before the race, hour before the race or whatever. Next part of this video, guys, I've made a big master list of tips that I know will help you with your feet. I'm including in there things that have worked for other people, like I've told you, but not for me. We're all different, so I figure I'm gonna provide those resources to make sure you have them if you need them. First thing everyone's gotta do, get this book. It's called Fixing Your Feet. There's a little glare on there. I'm gonna link this down in the description, of course, with everything else great resource and lots of options in here for how to take care of your feet. Also in here, if you do get blisters and you are needing to remedy them in a quick way, amazing resources in here and lists of things to do. Obviously in the middle of a race, that's just not fun to have to deal with, but the biggest thing I can tell you, my biggest takeaway here, get rid of the fluid, make the pressure go away. That's the biggest pain that comes from that blister is just the swelling and the pocket of fluid. You wanna drain it safely, not using anything that's dirty and making sure you're able to kind of tape up the situation and move on top of it. So get this book, great stuff in here. Next thing I want you guys to do 
any sort of race with sand, rocks, anything that could get in your shoes, you wanna get a pair of gaiters. These are basically ankle protectors that connect to your shoe. They come with a little bit of Velcro. These have the hook on the front. You can see it there. This hook goes to the laces, and then you wear this on under the sock right below it, and then it Velcros to the back of the shoe. So you create this close around the edge of the ankle so that you're not gonna let any debris get inside the shoe. I will say for loose sand, I did a race out in Arizona, 50 miler. Lots of sand, sand still got in my shoes. I had to empty them out, but this at least helped it not happen as fast. When you get that loose sand and rocks in your shoe, you're gonna get that extra friction rubbing around. So you really wanna avoid that as best you can. They make really good gaiters now. This was more of a cheap version I got. I'm gonna link this site because like I said, I didn't spend too much on them, which is good, but I think they make way better ones now, um, especially those people doing like 250 miles in Moab and stuff. They probably have it down. Next thing, I want you guys to look into compound benzoin tincture is what it's called. In the Fixing Your Feet book, they talk about using these for making any adhesive stick more. I got a big pack, obviously. They come in little like cotton swab uh, sticks. I played with this a lot. It did not work for me, but for my friends, it really makes everything stick. They never have issues with their tape moving around. So these aren't too expensive. You basically put it on before putting that tape on. I, my method was putting the Band-Aid on first and I found that that all stuck together well. But some people really have a lot of luck with putting this down, putting the tape around, and then they're good to go, especially even on the heel. So something to look into that Fixing Your Feet book talks about this. Next on my list of tips, guys, Z-Sorb Powder is another recommended product from the book. This is a great drying agent, so it basically takes any moisture out of the area. One thing I wanna be clear on, you cannot use both a runner's lube and this at the same time. They're gonna cancel each other out. I kinda of learned this the hard way. It would be obvious if I thought about it for a little bit longer, but don't use these two things together. Pick your strategy. If you find that you are someone who struggles with naturally sweaty feet, I would go the drying route more than I would the lube route. So when you use the Z-Sorb powder, what they recommend is actually opening up the sock, dumping this in, shaking it, getting this really dry and ready to go, and then you would put it over your tape situation. They have you using it in combination with that swab to make the tape stick. Um, it's kind of a process you have to just play with the order of and see what works best for you. What I saw happen to me is that my tape still rolled off and I was trying to use more adhesive mid-race and stuff and nothing was really sticking because at that point my feet were already more uh, wet. So these are all great things and I'm telling you for some people this is everything that works, but you wanna pick your strategy. I found that the Band-Aid and the tape and this created the least problems for me, but I wanted to share this with you guys so that you guys know. Two more important tips to cover here, guys. If you are on pavement, and that could be a road marathon or you're doing an ultra on pavement, I know in Florida they've got that crazy hundred where you cross the bridge, come back, you are gonna need to be aware that blisters can form much quicker because your feet are stepping over and over and over the same exact way. There's nothing varied about the terrain. So you're coming down on the same exact position every single time. The only difference you might see is you might fall into more of a marathon shuffle. You're not picking your feet up as much. Versus you're on the trails or varying outdoor mountain terrain, things are changing all the time. That in itself can create a little bit of barrier to any rubbing or blisters because things are changing enough, you're not over and over repeating on the same spot. If you feel anything coming up, any sort of discomfort, pain, rubbing, when you're on the pavement, catch it early. I know that a lot of us on those road races are trying to hit a certain pace because it can be more consistent that way. Maybe we're trying to qualify for Boston or something. You wanna catch it early. I know you don't wanna stop and handle it, but with this toolbox that you now have of things you can use and things ready to go, you should have a quick fix. Get that problem right as soon as you start to feel it and you won't have a problem. If you let it go on, you will end up slowing yourself down down the road and it's not worth it, I promise you, it happens to the best of us. Final point I wanna hit home for you guys today is do not skimp on your socks. I mentioned earlier, but this is a really quality investment that's going to pay off for you. You've gotta have merino wool in your socks, I swear by that. I have run countless miles in soaking wet merino wool socks that did not give me a problem. 
That is because the technology of it pulls the moisture away from the skin. You won't have any rubbing or problems with those. Darn Tough, Smart Wool, and Gingy, like I mentioned, if you want the toe sock, all of these brands, really quality, higher in price, but definitely worth it, and they last. Just make sure you do not dry your merino wool socks. Hang dry them. Additionally, guys, any socks that are old or have been used a lot have gone through many washes. They tend to get a little bit slippery and move around, so you really don't want to wear an old pair of socks on a race. I found a lot of problems with that. Any sort of cleanser, of course, if you are going to dry your socks, dryer sheets, any fabric softener, that can really affect the quality of the fabric and over time they just don't stay as tight to your foot which can create problems. So invest in good socks, get a new pair for the race, it'll be worth it. That is everything I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have additional tips that I haven't mentioned here, please drop in the comments for all of us to read and use. Get the book that I mentioned and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.